What up, what up, world? This is Decent here, back with another installment of Pop Dust Presents. And my guest at this time released her debut EP, Melanin and Melancholy, last year. She's an actress. She's a dope Bronx person. My Bronx bias is kicking in. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kate Odalugwe. Kate, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. So, your yes. project. Yes. Give us a little context behind the title. Okay, so. <laughs> how it came to be, um, social security number. No. Um, where your parents are from. Okay. Um, blood type. No, okay. Um, what's the paste up? <laughs> okay. So uh, why are we doing this interview? If you're I don't. It's called Melon and Melancholy, which is a tongue twister for some. Um, yeah, it's six songs. Um, I wrote the lyrics for all of them, did a lot of vocal arranging, and worked with an amazing producer. And I started writing it at a point in my life where you know things were a bit difficult, you know. And I wanted to write something that could really tell my story and like chart the path that I was going on. And what made me really happy about it was like if you go, if you like listen to it in chronicle chronological order really mm -hmm. does tell the story of somebody who is like dealing with these issues but then coming to a place where you can say like yeah I think I'm gonna be okay and it's been like so dope to like hear different people relate to that aspect of it um, I think it fits under the umbrella of like indie pop but like specific songs have different like influences like Sunday Night Blues is a very like R&B inspired song or like Bianu Le is obviously like a Nigerian inspired. One of like, my favorite songs. Uh, thank you. <laughs> inspired song. So, but yeah, it fits under that kind of umbrella of indie pop, and it really does tell this story of someone who is going on this journey and coming to a place where you know you're healing. And I feel like that's something that we should celebrate. So yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, <laughs> first project. Yeah. What were the nerves like? Because I know oh, my for any artist, putting their first body of work out into the universe can be very, very exciting, very, very nerve wracking. Yeah. And just the process itself, as far as writing and recording, mm -hmm. can just be a mixture of different emotions. So what was the journey like for you? So yes, the nerves are very real. Mm -hmm. um, I think what really helped me, um, so kind of the way I came into writing music was I started out with the open mic scene in New York. So I was just performing anywhere that had an open mic. I would go New York, like Parkside Lounge, like I, I would be there to like listen and I would be doing arrangements of other artists' songs, like covers and mm -hmm. stuff, and making it fit my own voice. And I just really wanted to tell my story so badly because I was singing all of these songs by other people. And, um, but I was still really scared because people, I started to sort of gain a following from open mics and people really loved hearing me switch up. Like for instance, one of the most popular covers I've done is Juice by Chance the Rapper. Mm. People like loved that like cover and kind of what I, the jazz elements I added to it. But I wanted, you know, people to hear my story and like have me like evoke emotion that way. But I was just really scared because I hadn't written for a long time. So I wrote poetry a lot as a kid. Um, I was published in like an anthology when I was like 13. Um, but I kind of was rusty and I was afraid. So I was just, yeah, I was just really scared. But what really helped I think was the open mics and having other artist friends who would just be like, girl, write this damn album like you're just like <laughs> you're just being annoying and yeah they really helped to push me and I'm really glad I did it because just being able to hear other people relate to words that I've written like there's no feeling that's better than that I would say awesome awesome so you touched on the different influences in you know this project yeah and outside of the last song you yeah. know which definitely you know lends itself to your Nigerian background exactly what made you want to go that route? Because naturally when, you know, me and I figure most people, when they hear a Nigerian artist, they're thinking world music, they're thinking Afrobeats right yeah, off exactly. the bat. But what compelled you to kind of, you know, bunk tradition and just go for a more jazz oriented, a more acoustic oriented, a more classical yeah. oriented sense, and even like you said, pop element? My inspirations are kind of what, like, um, prompted me to do that. So I really, I love artists that tell stories mm -hmm. and who really are trying to say something and evoke a certain emotion with their music. So people like India Ree, like Lord, um, 
who kind of, well, not in your specifically, but like Lord, for example, is like taking little bits and pieces from different like genres and just making sure that she tells a story regardless of what she, her influence is. And like that, for me, I kind of feel like it doesn't matter what specific genre I'm pulling from for a specific song. It's just, am I telling a story? And am I saying something with the lyrics? Am I saying something with this song? So I think that's my biggest thing. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for us bad mouthing Lord before. No, we I was just like I was just quiet. I was like I don't want to talk about Lonnie Federer. But <laughs> we're kidding. We love Lord here. Yeah. <laughs> we love the Lord. We love Lord and Taylor. Um, anything that you could possibly think of with the Lord in it. Yeah. Um, Lord Tenenbaum. I don't know if that's a real person, but yeah. we love him too. But it's funny that you say Indiari because. Yeah. One of the things that I don't try to do is try to compare artists. But... I, know, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming as soon as I said it. Oh my God. But of course, it's not like, oh, she sounds like, you know, she's know. vibing. I, it's I, more so, yeah. you know, in the same family tree. Yeah. And I think what, where you excel at is the fact that you're able to take that vocal tone mm -hmm. and apply it to different genres of music mm -hmm. as opposed to India, who kind of just stays in yeah. the neo soul kind of pocket. So yeah. that's definitely something that. I feel like it makes your music very, very unique. So you're also an actress as well. Yeah. I actually found out about your acting abilities after watching season two of Sit Black Get and Relax. Relax. Hey, Get Sit on Black that. and Relax <laughs> is actually created by Jess Latasha, Yay. who is on We Shall Over Chuck, which is also sponsored by Pop Dust. Hey Latasha, hey Jameer. <laughs> so tell us about your acting experience. Where'd you hone your chops? Oh, okay. So that was surprisingly very recent. Mm. So a lot of people, I think my friends that I've made that have, that act here have been acting since they were a kid. I didn't start acting until college, actually. Yeah, so it's, it's really recent. So um, I've been singing my whole life. And then in college, I watched A Raisin in the Sun. Um, the, Which version? The 60s version with, with Sidney Poitier. Yeah. Love it. It kind of, I mean, backstory to my own family, like, we moved out of the Bronx to the suburbs when I was like 11-ish. And Ruby Dee, the actress that played Benita Younger, she did this thing when she went into like the house of the residents and she like did, she opened her arms and like spun, spun around. around. And that got me because I did that exact same thing when we visited the house that we were going to like live in in Delaware. And just the story, you obviously, everybody knows the plot of Raising the Sun, but the, the story really got to me. And the actors just portrayed that desperation, that dream that they had so well. And I wanted to do that so badly. So in like true Nigerian fashion, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I like obsessed over it and, and immediately was like, I need to be the best at this. So like I like read like as many books as I could get on it. I took classes in acting in college minored in theater arts, and then I moved here to straight act. I didn't know I was going to pursue music here um, mm -hmm. at first, but... And then I took classes at Stella Adler Studio, at T. Schreiber Studio, anywhere that could do some sort of, like, training. Mm -hmm. And um, I got really fortunate. I got into this program by the American Theater Wing. They do wow. the Tony Awards, and I got additional training there, and that's really where I met, like, agents and casting directors and got to get my feet planted on the ground. And then um, I was lucky enough to book uh, Williamstown Theater Festival, which really helped me get like myself out there. But I think the, one of the most fun I've ever had like on set was like Latasha's show, just because she let me like improv and just have a good time. Usually people like cast me as a dramatic, like sad or angry black woman. So it was fun to just put like a happy, jokey Nigerian girl <laughs> in, in Latasha's show. And yeah, it was good. <laughs> and speaking of, you know, your parents and your upbringing. Yeah. On a scale of one to oh my goodness, <laughs> how <laughs> upset or devastated were they when you decided that you wanted to go into the art? Because well, I've been singing since I was a kid and like choirs, church choirs, school choirs, whatever. Mm -hmm. They've always thought that acting and music was like a dope hobby that I had. Of course. So they would come to all of the choir shows. When I started doing musical theater in college, they came to all of them. They never missed like a single show because they just thought it was a cool thing. And plus you were pursuing education. Yeah, so, so and I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like in like the Ivy League and I was pre-med, but so they just thought that this is a cool like thing that I did. Oh my God, they must have not talked to you for months. <laughs> oh, it, it was wild. It was, it was not good. Like, the only thing that helped I think was I got to go to the Tonys and 
I think that helped because they could see that like it was a possibility. Mm. I don't know, but they were really like scared. I don't want to say mad. At, they were more just afraid. As most I, I would say, as parents are, because you know, like it's hard, and like you know, they come from a place where they have to struggle, and they don't want their kids to struggle. Um, so it came from a good place, but it was. Because <laughs> you know, with African parents and West Indian parents, is like first you tell them, yeah, and then you know they're upset with you. And yeah. then once you actually start to succeed in it, yeah. it's like they're still not impressed. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but they're, like, they're still, happy yeah. that it worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're excited to see what's on our horizon for you. And thank you once again for stopping by. Where can people find you out on social media? Yes, so all my information is Kate, at kateodolukwe.com. Instagram, Twitter is at kateodolukwe. And stay tuned for future updates. Bam, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Kate Odalukwe for stopping by. Melanin and Melancholy is out now on all streaming platforms. Yes. My name is Decent. This has been another episode of Pop Dust Presents. Make sure you follow us on all social media at yes. Pop Dust. Make sure you visit our website at popdust.com. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and do us a little favor. Yeah. Click the little bell to be notified of brand new content, and we will see you soon. Peace. <laughs>